Hi, my name is Emma Lovell and I'm a coach, speaker and writer. I help business owners to travel the world more and live a life they love now. I'm excited to be on the online prosperity show and I can't wait to have you join me for an insightful conversation into stepping into your power, showing up as your unique self and living the life that you love. Now, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. I'm your host, Prosper Tarawinga, and today we have a remarkable guest who is here to share her journey of empowerment, impact, and inspiration. Emma, how are you doing today? Oh, I thank you so much for that lovely intro. And you wouldn't believe it, but I pulled a card today and it's empowerment. So use that in my intro. Oh, fantastic. Well, we're going to hear all about that because you are a true leader and you're empowering other people to be, do and have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And you're helping them, especially with their personal brand. And you being a true leader in the world of personal branding and coaching, I'm hoping you've got an ace up your sleeve today and you are definitely going to be showing us and letting us know how to show up in the world, um, you know, in the online space. Now, for those that are meeting Emma for the very first time, where have you been? I mean, keep, <laughs> if you keep hiding under that rock, you're going to miss out on experts like Emma, who's on a mission to help female leaders rise and make their mark and create enduring impact. Now, she's a force behind Lovely Communications, which is a platform that equips women with the tools and support they need to flourish in business, establish their authority, and craft their own distinctive brand. Now, Emma, I could go on and on and uh, speak about your accolades and everything you can tell. I'm really excited to have you here on the show today. Now, could you maybe tell us a little bit about yourself and how you actually uh, started your journey in personal branding? Yeah, absolutely. It's, again, such kind words. And um, it's really lovely to be here with you because we have connected on LinkedIn where I do have a presence. But yeah, I didn't just wake up one day and start personal brand. I have started my business journey 14 years ago. Uh, my anniversary is this Friday, 14 years uh, in business. So I started in uni pretty young, pretty clueless, which I think is a great way to start business. You have to just start somewhere. And um, I thought I was doing PR, communications, marketing at university. And I was like, yeah, why not start a business? I want to work for myself. Uh, so basically turned a, an employer into a client, started telling people I was running my business and away we went. So I started in PR, a bit of marketing, really sat in the promotion space and then went into social media when that became a thing, got paid to be on Facebook, which was kind of like, oh, wow, this is amazing. Uh, and then moved more into copywriting. Um, but towards my 10-year anniversary, I was kind of doing all the things. So it's like if you asked me to do something under the marketing umbrella, I'd probably say yes. And I wasn't really um, specialising and I didn't really know how to niche. I didn't I didn't want to, I guess. I, I felt like I was cutting off my nose to spite my face. So I finally got to a point where I had a business coach and I just was so overwhelmed. I was running a pet sitting business. I had run a music publicity business. I was running, uh, a, I was kind of a side business of a partner, which I still am a partner with an Indian travel company. And then my communications business, which at times have has eight clients. And it was just, all the things. And my message was confusing to me. It was confusing to others. And I really wasn't proactively marketing. But the thing that I was always doing was showing up, networking. Uh, people knew me. They didn't always know exactly what I did, but they're like, Emma Lovell's great. Go to Emma Lovell. And so this business coach actually helped me to package up my services as to help individuals because that was the thing that was missing. You said it. It's impact. I want to make an impact. And sometimes when you're doing marketing communications, you, you're just a cog in the wheel. You do the copywriting for a website. You might not never see where that actually ends up in the final product. It's it's not very um, fulfilling at times. So I really wanted to go on a journey with my clients. So I just turned and said, hi, I'm now doing personal branding <laughs> and packaged up my services into one-on-one -on -one programs, 
which then led to a course, led to a podcast, uh, and yeah, and now retreats, personal branding photo shoots. I'm speaking, presenting masterclasses, and you know the funny thing with businesses and and evolutions and people as we grow, my my personal brand's about to change as well. So, well, sorry, my personal brand. I'm stepping more into my personal brand, so my offering an audience might change but I'm still going to be helping people to be who they are and that's what personal brand is you are your personal brand so it's being the best you can be living in alignment with what you want to be doing to attract the work and life that you want that's what personal brand means absolutely and thank you so much for taking us on that journey now Emma it's quite intriguing that you have you know, sort of jumped into this um, world of wanting to niche. But I just want to go back a little bit when you were sort of doing just about everything else. I'm seeing that you already had a niche, but maybe it wasn't defined yet because indulge me here. I think you are the niche. So you being the person that can do the social media, the person that can do um, you know, the the copywriting that you were doing, the PR and everything else, if somebody would come to you, they would walk away with some sort of a product and it just so happened that you would have created it. Now, could you maybe explore that with me a little bit? Would you say that we don't necessarily have to have an industrial, maybe measured niche, but what we give our clients ends up becoming what it is that they ask us? to do for them? Uh, yeah, 100% agree because, yeah, as I said, I was so resistant to niche in, I guess, the traditional form because it was like niche to me meant demographics. And I feel like the niching really, the way that I was taught it, um, as opposed to target audience or ideal client, which is a better way to look at it, um, really spoke to, to kind of demographics. So your market is age 35 to 55. They live in this area. They have this job. And I'm like, yeah, a product, I get that for a product. I get that an Apple user is probably within this demographic and that's the people they're targeting. I just think like a service-based, it's not it's not as um, clear-cut as that. And when I did start to flip it and look at, yeah, my personal brand is and my offering is the unique combination of skills, experiences, um, reputation, all the things that make me, me, you know, I'm the X factor. I don't have an X factor. I say this to my clients, you don't need to have a one thing. You don't have to be the thing or have the thing or one unique product or service necessarily because your combination, your experience, your life that got you to this point, that's the unique X factor. And when I started looking at my ideal client and audience more as people, and when I went through sort of, um, it, was, it was wonderful to work with a business coach to look at it, you know, I really looked at it as individual people. And as I was doing some sort of practice sales calls and stuff like that, I was like, oh, my audience is like a, a Lisa and like a Zoe and like a Brian Prio. And so I started to really think about the people that I liked working with and that I could see their problem their pain, I could really see their pain and how I could work with them. And I still do the same today. You know, I've got my Christine, I've got my uh, Leisha, I've got my uh, Amanda. And I know when I'm talking to my audience, I'm talking to those people. And if you're a Susan or a Joe or a Jeff or a, I don't know, Sally, I don't know, being really old school names, um, then it might resonate with you. But I just, yeah, thank you for saying that because I think, as well, another colleague really said about niching as well, that when you're just starting out, when you're in your first few years, you're told to niche, and but you don't know yet. Like you don't know. You have to do a bit of trial and error. You have to test your market. You have to figure out what you want. Your message will become clearer and you'll start to attract these people and then you'll see a common thread. Um, and for me, it's more of like a red flag, green flag thing. If you like them, if you like the things about them, go towards the green flags. If you see things you don't like, see red flags, run. <laughs> don't go that way. Absolutely. And I'm glad that you played ball with me on that one because so many people really get confused when it comes to this whole uh, niching. And, um, you know, some some people, you know, 
end up just you know being like a deer in in, in headlights with without really moving forward with their business moving forward so see from where i come from emma we really embody the statement it takes a village to raise a child and do you, do you understand what the what statement actually means because what what that means in our village is when a kid gets to like 14 or 15 the parents actually let that kid go in the village now within that village there's um people that are experts in what they do so there's the village uh, smith then there's the cobbler and then there's the uh what's the person who who creates the oak barrels for the wine and then there's the winemaker and there's the baker within that village so for a week the kid goes and leaves with those people up until they've found out which is the one trade they actually like doing and then they then become an apprentice to that person so you know I, I believe as entrepreneurs we should be allowed to really move into our space and do more of those things um that we then at the end of it start enjoying but you probably have done that you did pr you did social media um i didn't hear websites i've seen you in front and behind a camera um you know so you you had a taste of um everything else what what really excites you about what it is that you do i i love seeing people shine i love seeing people when they get that aha um i love seeing them show up um and get to have their moment uh so something that you know the personal brand photo shoots is really wonderful to see that because it happens in such a quick time whereas when you know I can I still do work with clients one-on-one and they go on a bit of a journey even on the retreat you sometimes see over the few days on the retreat somebody come out have a realization have an aha but actually those gifts and learnings and opportunities they tend to come because retreats are such a big experience and a deep experience they tend to come months and months later um so again getting to witness the journey over time of my clients and sometimes I have to pull them up and actually say to them like they're kind of being hard on themselves and they're saying I need to do more of this or I need to do more of that and I'm like can we just pause for a second and and I don't want to diminish what you're saying but can we please look at where you were when we started and look at what you've done like can we celebrate your wins and celebrate like you just they just so come out of themselves and they're doing such bigger things but the problem is the goalpost moves and moves and moves so then you don't really actually acknowledge what you've done and so what I get to do when I'm working with people is dig deeper and and personal brand for me is about really reconnecting to who they are and so I want to go back. I want to hear the story. I want to hear the, the you know, the founder, you know, where did it start? What was uni like? Did you ever win an award? What sports did you play? When did you achieve something? All of that stuff. And some of it seems quite irrelevant and kind of like, what is this woman on? Ask them what their favourite colour is, what their star sign is, what their spirit animal would be. Like it all seems, but then what it does is give me a picture of them and I get to know them and get and then they get to know themselves again and it's such a gift when they see themselves the way that we see them and that's probably the biggest thing that I see is I do an exercise with clients where I ask them for three words so I say go to your audience and this is a for your audience if you want to do this one of my favorites so go to your network I'd say a work colleague a friend a family member um you know people from a bit different uh, schools of life and ask them for three words. That's it. If somebody didn't know me, how would you describe me? And get them to give you those three words. And then also write those three words about yourself. And I can pretty much guarantee you that the words you write about yourself will be nowhere near as lovely or as sort of aspirational as the words that your friends, family, colleagues give you. And often my clients would get those back and and get quite emotional because they just don't see themselves the way we we see them as intelligent and beautiful and knowledgeable and creative and fun and and you know sparkly and they can't see that and so it becomes this lovely exercise of marrying up and aligning the way others see you your personal brand is how others see you and how you see yourself so that you believe the words that people are saying about you and then you're going out and you're telling that story so that we believe what you're telling us about you 
And as I said, with the photo shoots, I see that happen within an hour. <laughs> like they come in, they're nervous, they're shy, they don't believe, they're not sure, but they get there and they do it anyway. And when we boost them up, the amazing photographer, and I'm there telling them, you know, remember what we talked about, what you want to showcase. And then they see these images and they're like, that's me. And I'm like, yeah, that's you. So it's really fun to see that in such a short space, but to see it over the different journeys. So short answer, getting people to see themselves in the best light that possible. Absolutely. I believe you give them back themselves because all these people would have uh, grown up. Maybe some of them had to, you know, just go to school, go to college, go to a job, get married. And nobody has actually stopped to tell them how amazing they are unless that person wants something from them, you know. And um, if you really, really look at it, I've been in Australia for 10 years. And the first thing that I recognized was how tall poppy is quite rive around here and how it sort of really limits, um, you know, people from stepping into their own, um, you know, glory and, um, you know, amazingness. Now, would you would you attest to that? Um, or do you think that's a whole different uh, view from somebody who's coming from a, a different place? No, I think it really helps to have the other people from out, like from outside Australia come and see. It's so blatant. I think we get used to it and we live with it. And it's why we find America, I mean, we talked a little bit off air about the difference between America and Australia and how they run businesses, but we find it quite abrasive how confident they are and how self-assured, but they just believe in themselves and they back themselves. And I think it's something to be admired and um, not everyone, every, you know, people have different levels, but generally they have a culture of celebration and a woo and I'm good, like I'm good at this. And in Australia, like you wouldn't dare say that. We see some of our amazing celebrities who've done incredible things and we build them up and build them up and then, oh, wait, don't, don't you get too big, don't you get too fancy. And I didn't realise how much I was holding on to that. And like you said, such a great example I talk about like the roles and titles. So over the course of our life, you know, seeing my son now, he's two and a half. He's in the most beautiful two and a half to six. I think he, I just let him shine, let him be him. He's the most him he's ever going to be. And I want to keep fostering that. And I want to protect the little bubble around him so that he gets to, you know, keep himself because over life we get all these roles and titles and layers on top of us. And so I'm, I'm often working with women in their probably 40s, late 40s, 50s, and, and that's the thing. They've just had all this stuff, been told what they should be and how they should be, and, and we have to remove all those layers so we can get back to who they are. But I didn't realise how much I was taking that on as well. And there's a thing called money archetypes, and it turns out my second highest profile is celebrity which shouldn't be a surprise to anyone who's seen me on LinkedIn in my sparkly pants and, you know, the fact that I'm a speaker and I'm on stage. But I didn't, I I was kind of like um, reducing her. And I got told last year by Psychic, whether you believe in them or not, but no one's saying the things you say about, uh, no one's saying to you the things that you're saying about yourself. So like I'm still, the stories from being told to be smaller or maybe from my childhood or my high school, those voices were still there, but no one in my network, no one in my audience is telling me to be small or to slow down or to stop or that I'm too much. All I'm seeing is encouragement, but the voice was so loud to me. So I have to let go of that. And if, you know, if possible, show up even more, but it's been that stepping into uh, and where I'm leading is to step into my own personal brand. So we we mentioned that my business name is Lovely Communications. It's been Lovely Communications for 14 years. But uh, as of this Friday, 1st of September, which is coming up, I will be Emma Lovell. And I am fully stepping into my personal brand, the irony. <laughs> I've been working on this for four years now, but um, helping other people to do it. But I was finally able to step into that. And be more unapologetic and realize that by showing up, just by showing up and by being me, being who I am, that I can make money from that, that people will pay me for being me and living my life the way that I live because I inspire, encourage and motivate. And yeah, it's been a journey. 
Wow. And on behalf of the world, we would like to introduce Miss Emma Lovell. This is, this is going to be an exciting endeavor because now you're showing up without any restrictions, you know, without you stopping yourself and um, just really, you know, being the person you were meant to be. Now, how does that feel? I think there's been some fear coming up this week, even though I'm ready. Like it really dropped in in like November last year that that this was the time. And funnily enough, I can't find it right now. I think it's literally fallen behind my desk, but I got sent a plaque that day that I decided. I got a sent a plaque, a wooden plaque, and it said, Lovely Communications Established 2009. And I was like, oh, my gosh, it's literally a sign. It's a sign to let go and that it, like it's like a memento of that time and then I ended up working with that coach again and they said we've got to send you a gift and I knew the gift this time and I said can you write on the gift Emma Lovell so now I have Emma Lovell established 2023 so I literally have the old and the new um but you know it still took time and that's the thing with my clients with personal brand when you're starting this work it takes time because we've got to remove those roles those layers of being told all these roles and titles, being told to be small, being told that we have to conform, um, being told that you have to be have one title and that's the thing, one business and that's the thing. When, of course, you're a beautiful, beautiful picture of, of a combination of all these pieces. And I got this analogy when I had my son. Someone asked me, how was my new role of motherhood or how was my new title of motherhood? And I said, actually, yeah. I love it. I love it. But motherhood is a part of me. It's a piece of me. And I feel like I'm a jigsaw puzzle and there's many different pieces and motherhood's going to be a pretty big piece in that puzzle. But, you know, I, the, the full picture of Emma is a bunch of little pieces. And I think when my clients come to me, they've lost pieces or they've forgotten pieces or one's behind the couch. And so my job, like you said earlier, was is to bring all those pieces back together um, reassemble them into what is now and then to show you the full beautiful puzzle of that person absolutely and I, I quite like the making of this whole setup because it, you know you went on this journey you went on to discover um, you know what exactly you wanted to be only to come back to become yourself have you ever <laughs> so many journeys around the world so many algorithms I can imagine the times when the social media algorithms were changing and everybody had to start all over again trying to um, match up to what the social media platforms were doing only to realize we had to introduce ourselves to whatever new platform that was coming in and it was us all along that we were looking for and uh, I'm so happy that you have found yourself so your skill set is undeniably impressive and I know you're just going to take off you know because you now have all these components that will help you uh, go from strength to strength and um, obviously personal branding is something that half of the time when we're doing it we don't quite actively call it that but you're creating your brand nonetheless you know people are saying certain things about yourself and you know they are already concluding what little box in their head should they uh, place you so that they can retrieve you when the time comes to sort of work with you now how do you then use all these um you know systems and processes that you now have to create a holistic experience for your clients because some clients like you said they come in with different uh pieces and you then put them all together do you have like a set you know process that you take people through that you you can share with us you know so that people can understand how to work with you yeah absolutely I mean you know it's really that discovering of themselves again and meeting people where they're at you know some people um, are much further along than they think they are and like you said they're like I've got to do personal branding or I've got to learn how to personal brand or I'm not doing it at all when there's actually things that they're already doing that are right and like I said before let's celebrate the things that we're doing right and 
um, keep doing those and then we can introduce new things. I will never have somebody come to me and go, you've got to be on TikTok and you need a website and you need a podcast and you've got to go and speak on stage. And people say to me, like, they're like, please don't make me an influencer. And I'm like, I wish we could reclaim that word of influencer. Like I'm an influencer. I have influence. I know that I have influence on people, whether that's one person or 10 people or a hundred people, it should be, it's a great thing to have influence. Um, what they mean is they don't want to be, I guess, dancing on Instagram. And I'm like, that's oh, fine. I thought, I thought it was, th oh, sorry. What was that? <laughs> yes, it's time. It's time for your moment. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you don't have to no, know. I would never force anyone because everyone is different. And also I I said, they go, oh, you're doing all this. And I see what you're doing. And I, I should be doing what you're doing. And I was like, I'm like a crazy person. Please don't do what I do. And like you said, I have this skill set. I've been doing social media for clients. Like I have systems and, and things that I don't even realize I have. Like I'm just, it's so ingrained that I just do it innately. Um, but I have had to look at that and, and rethink. So how I could teach that. So initial stage is really doing a brand audit, understanding how you are showing up in the world. Um, I do have a free per, uh, brand audit guide, a checklist uh, for your audience if they want it. Basically, just to see how you're showing up, because again, you might be showing up more than you think, and you might have more content out there about you. Your digital footprint might be better than you think, or it might just be not what you want to have out there. You realize, you know, I looked at a bunch of my testimonials and they really spoke to that social media and marketing and that sort of work where I need them to speak to who I am as a person, what I'm like to work with and show more of my leadership as well as my presenting and speaking. So it's just we don't have to look at it with judgment. It's just an understanding. Once we've got that, then we go, okay, well, let's set some goals of where you do want to go and what what do you want to get out of this? And a lot of the time I think there's a lot of business versus personal brand complication of people like, should I grow the business? Should I grow my personal brand? My answer is always both. But your personal brand is going to stay with you forever. You might decide not to run your business forever. So putting all the equity into your business is not always the greatest thing. So let's look at how we can put some equity into your personal brand and work from there. So then we kind of establish what are then going to be your key messages? Like what do you want to stand for? What do you want to be known for? And it doesn't have to be one thing like we've talked about. It doesn't have to be the one thing. I don't do elevator pitches. I do a suite of messages so that when you go to an event, you're not going, oh, what was the script? What did I need to say? Oh, I said that wrong. You can just learn to introduce yourself in a way that feels comfortable. And sometimes that might be a few words. Sometimes it might be a sentence. Sometimes it might be when you're presenting, you need to do a paragraph. So we we really write that, that content and kind of practice writing our own content so that you can have those messages. And it was really important thing for me to empower my clients to write the messaging because if you go just get a copywriter, then it's not your words. Like you're allowing someone to tell you who you are again. So we don't all have to be writers, but you definitely can find your own words to talk about yourself. And then ultimately it's getting that message out there. So choosing the channels which work for you, choosing the mediums which work for you, I do believe that we have to, even if you're introverted, find a way to do networking because, you know, like us, Prosper, like whether it's on LinkedIn, uh, whether it's in a networking event, at a conference, on an online meetup call, the power of those one-on-one -on -one relationships and connections, like that honestly, hands down, if I had one secret source, my network and my ability to build relationships is the reason I'm in business for 14 years. So if they're going to do nothing else, then you need to start building relationships and building a network, building your village, building your your business village and um, your your yeah personal village as well of people who are going to be your champions and your supporters. And I know now that I go to these events like Business Chicks events and I went to Osmumpreneur the other day and it's not just me working the room anymore. I now have 5, 10, 20 advocates that are my clients, that are my colleagues, that are my fans, that are my supporters, they're out there working in the room for me as well as me. So it's it's really powerful. So, yeah, we just work out, you know, who are you, what's your message and how do you get it out there? 
Absolutely. And the more you know yourself, the more you know where you need to show up a whole lot more and where you need to outsource and leverage. And I, I, I believe uh, what you just said there is powerful because if you want to go far, you go alone. If you want to go further, you know, you go together. And it's it's as simple as that. So many people want to go at it alone. Emma, you have no idea. And um, guess what? I blame Hollywood. You know, have you ever watched those Hollywood movies where the cowboy comes into a village and then everyone is just probably having lunch and having a drink and they're all drunk and then he comes, he orders a whiskey and then somebody in the back starts to starts trouble and then he just throws that whiskey shot glass at them and then he fights the whole fights the whole bar and then he drives it he rides into the sunset, you know, and people have watched that and they've taken that as if it was an order as to how you run your business. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, that's why so many people don't go past the three year mark and congratulations. I mean, 14 years is not a joke. You've done it four times over. So, you know, good on you for exemplifying that. Now, obviously you've empowered um, you know, people to sort of maybe connect with their strengths, which is something that a lot of people are disconnected, uh, first of all, from who they are and their actual um, essence. And um, you are also allowing people to sort of share their stories. And I know that can be very impactful because when you hear your story, especially when you're saying it, it validates your journey. You know what I mean? And you no longer have to hide behind um you know whatever facade you'd put for yourself now maybe could you share an inspiring success story i know you are one you've built yourself up and everything else but if you have a success story that sort of exemplifies the transformation of your work or your coaching and you know what you've done for somebody else that hasn't been you oh a few are coming to mind but I had a really um, lovely one and it kind of um, is where I'm, I'm heading and it was a woman who came on my retreat uh, and, again, you know, we connected on LinkedIn and on social media and uh, sort of been in each other's realm. She's a writer. Uh, I, my writing people are like my soul people. I love them. So I'm still very connected to that um, community. But we never met and then she listened to my podcast and then she messaged me and said, oh, by the way, I love the podcast. Did I tell you that? And then she said, oh, and by the way, I, I'm going to come on the retreat. You know, people say that. Uh, uh, but she came. And when she got there, she told me that it was her, she'd moved to Perth. So we've been living in Sydney, but she'd moved to Perth. The retreat was in the Gold Coast, which is a five-hour flight. It was the first time she had left her children so to go on an event. And I just felt so honoured that she had chosen and felt safe to do that with me. Um, so to fly across the country, to leave her kids for three days, to invest in herself, to make the time for herself. I just thought it was so powerful. And then she really threw herself in. Uh, and then just to see, um, yeah, we, we had a lovely time. She really enjoyed it. Had some moments where we talked about some things, the one-on-one, -on -one, but connected with the other women. But it was months later we met up on the Gold Coast again. She was coming back. She was coming to a conference. And so we met up again for a drink and it was like, how is this the second time we've ever met in our lives? Like it just sort of click, click, click. And then she said, you know, I'm here again because of the retreat. She said, you know, just going on that retreat opened the door and showed me that I could do it, that I could do this again. That I And she had travelled a lot. Her and her husband had travelled a lot. She used to work in travel publications. But I guess since having kids, she hadn't, hadn't left them. Um, they had done some stuff together, but she hadn't left them and wasn't maybe doing it for herself. So she said, yeah, I got invited on this conference. I knew I could do it. And she said, I think because they'd seen me on the Gold Coast, it sort of was like, oh, we're doing another thing on the Gold Coast. Do you want to come and join us? And got invited by her client to go and join them and then got more involved with this client. So I think it just really opened the door to opportunities and allowed her to do something for herself uh, and to prioritise herself and what she wants in her work, what she wants in her life. Uh, so yeah, I think I think being a young, having young children, um, having that travel heart, and um, being able to incorporate for me now, where I'm shifting with the business is that I want to help 
business owners who want to travel more and live a life they love now. You know, because Prosper, you know, we start businesses and then we end up basically creating ourselves a 24-7 job, you know, and you get these people who even especially in the travel industry, people start travel business. They're like, I travel less than I ever did when I was traveling and I started this business because I love travel and now I can't. I can't go, they say. I can't go. I just think, you know, and I'm speaking to a very privileged audience here, we have a choice, you know, we have a choice. The, the audience that I'm speaking to, the clients that I'm working with, you have a choice, you know, and we get to decide what our life looks like. And I got into business for freedom and there have been days where I've gone, where's the free in freelancer? Where's the free, where's the freedom in this business that I've created? I, I'm, I'm locking myself in. And then it's just a quick thought of, hey, a minute. I'm the boss. I can change this at any second. And so I've managed to travel to 65 countries whilst running my business. Um, I have bought an investment property. Uh, My husband and I bought our apartment. I've got married, started a family, uh, and my business is still going strong. I just had my best financial year ever. So um, best revenue year ever. And I, I plan to three exit in the next year. So, you know, I think this is all possible. And I want to show others that. And I just don't believe as well. Um, I've had a lot of grief this year. I've had, unfortunately, deaths in my family, deaths in friends, and um, my my nephew is terminally ill. And we don't all get the time that we think we have. So I'm done playing small. I'm done waiting for one day, someday. Uh, and I don't want others to have those regrets or feelings either. So we've got to live the life we love now. Start now. That was that was really powerful. And if we could just take that segment and become the whole episode, I think that will be amazing. But I, I, I really enjoyed how you brought it home, especially with this lady who you single-handedly changed her life, even though she traveled, even though she had done stuff, but she had not in the last five years. And you're only as good as your last at bat, you know what I mean? So you could have been really good in your young, younger days, but in the last five years, if you haven't been looking after yourself, you literally can contract a disease, die, and nobody is going to remember you for what you were before. Now, with the way you're describing this whole setup, I'm beginning to think this is so much like a, 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 um, a for lack of a better word emma indulge me for a little bit okay i'm coming back to this see where i grew up you know when you get to the age of like 14 or 15 you i've told you about going on the village you also go through what's called a rite of passage which basically means you are you know being given the opportunity and the proverbial tap on the shoulder that you're an adult now this is who you are becoming. This is what your future is going to look like. And that literally wakes people up and they know I'm not a kid anymore. And having come here and I haven't seen any of those sort of activities happening. And when you then say, you know, you take people on these trips and then when they come back, they come back changed. I'm beginning to think that your retreats could be somewhat of a rite of passage for so many people that may not have been given the opportunity or the permission to really shine. And when they do come have a bit of a time with you, then they come back fully uh, changed and they're no longer a fully grown baby that they were at the time they uh, sort of came to you. Could you maybe comment on that in, you know, looking at how you were describing your retreats and how I understood them? Well, that's an honour. I think that's a lovely way I might steal some of that messaging, actually, because, yeah, I was just actually on a retreat with the amazing Denise Duffield-Thomas on her Rose Farm, and there were five women there, and of those women, I was the only one who had been on a retreat before, and some of those women are 20 years older than me, Um, and I've been on many, let alone running them, let alone now teaching people how to run them, and I was like, wow, you know, it's not just something that everybody does or everyone knows is available to them. So the permission that you said, I think that's really beautiful. 
Um, I love that you've brought in your cultural heritage because um, travel and culture is such a big thing for me. And yeah, I guess we have our 18th, but that's, I feel like you become more of a child after your 18th than you go and be more silly after your 18th generally. I, I did have a rite of passage in that I went and did a one year overseas. So I did a gap year, lived overseas, went to more than 12 countries when I was 18, lived out of home, all those sorts of things. So I, I really threw myself in the deep end. So I think I got my own rite of passage and that's what travel does for me. And I used to work, um, I started doing these challenges. So one of my uh, my second trip to Africa was to Tanzania. I went to Mount Kilimanjaro. I trekked to the, uh, to the top of the largest freestanding mountain in the world, 5,985 metres exactly. Uh, and we raised money for charity. And so I got a addicted to those sorts of adventures because of the life change because it was literally life-changing like I stood on the top of the world and to come back and you just don't the perspective change and you're just I'm looking at people going like don't you realize like don't you realize like the world has changed because it changed for me and so I kept going on those adventures and I saw what you said that rite of passage in people like choosing to go was about 60 70 percent of the challenge like going yes and committing to it then there were fundraising which is a big thing to do and for some people big outside their comfort zone three thousand dollars they had to ask for for charity then they had to train you know and for some people it might be the biggest physical thing they've ever done and then they have to go away on what's like a school camp they probably never haven't been on a group situation and this is for some people the biggest challenge is being part of a team and being part of a group dynamic and going outside the comfort zone again and then going through this big thing and and managing their emotions all that sort of stuff and so i actually ended up taking on the role of tour manager for these companies so i both worked as a contractor helping because I'd been on the adventures to help people to fundraise and train and get ready and to even sign on to the trips. And then I'd actually go on the challenges, uh, cycling Cambodia, Vietnam, trekking to Everest Base Camp, trekking in Bhutan with groups of between eight to 32 people. And yeah, what you said, I saw, I saw some of them go through this rite of passage and people will come home and I'm like, not to scare you, but you might leave your marriage. You might get married. You might buy a house. You might move house. You'll quit your job. Like when you've had that life shift, you come back and you're like, I want to change things. And so, yeah, I think it's a real honor that having all that experience and having had the experience of what travel and group travel and going into this place uh, and space of opportunity and, and seeing things differently, that is the the experience I want to create for people on my retreat and to create a lot of space. We don't do a lot of stuff. We're there to be there because I believe that these experiences attract the right people at the right time, uh, like-minded people, and you're going to get as much value from them as you are from me and from the place and from the space. So, um, yeah, I, I will definitely be adding to my messaging rite of passage. Fantastic. And um, how can those that are uninitiated uh, join these retreats or be a part of the new Emma Lovell brand? Well, fingers crossed. I don't know when this is going live, but fingers crossed the website's live. This is crunch time. So it'll be emmalovell.au. You can always find me on LinkedIn where we connected, which is uh, I'm Emma Lovell. So it's L O V E L L L L L L L Life. Uh, so you can find me there. Instagram, I'm going to be Emma Lovell, exclamation mark, because I'm really owning that. Uh, on Facebook, again, Emma Lovell. If my if I've done my personal branding right, hopefully you could Google me as well and you'll see a big blonde hair, a very smiley face, probably some sparkles or bright colours, and you'll know that that's me. And, uh, yeah, I'll also be having um, a new podcast because two wasn't enough, Prosper, so I'm going to have a third and it's going to be called The Emma Lovell Show so that I have the freedom to talk about all the things, business, travel, self-care, life, and I would love to connect with you at any of those places, but maybe if we have to choose one, let's say LinkedIn. Fantastic. That would be amazing. I'm going to put all those uh, links in the show notes below so that people can definitely jump on board um, on this incredible journey. Now, Emma, I, I, I got to ask you, I mean, it's been 14 years. You've changed lives, not only other people's lives, you've changed your own life. 
your family dynamic has changed. Aquaman is probably listening in the background there or something like that. If you were to take yourself back 14 years when you were getting started in business, what sort of advice would you give yourself today, knowing what you know now? Oh, so it's an easy one. Um, just start. I, I I had ignorance on my side. Ignorance is bliss. And I think um, I had a leg up on people who are starting businesses when they're 30s or 40s or had a corporate career. They have the benefit of the financial backing potentially, <laughs> but I had the backing of the I got nothing to lose. I got to give it a go. And uh, I learn on the fly and I, I went in with a beginner's mind, I guess, um, just willing to learn, willing to try, willing to give things a go. You have to start somewhere. And if you don't start, if you don't try, then you never know. So I would still say, you know, I think Nike will sue me at some point, but just do it. <laughs> they have a long line of people they would want to sue because everyone is just really using sort of their um, slogan there. And I'm really, really excited that, um, you know, we've had time to have a chat with you today. I mean, your skill set is undeniably impressive. You know, your personal branding, your networking, your coaching and podcasting and things of that nature. But you've had people around you that have supported you and you did start to allude to um, you know having all these things happening in your family but I think um, Aquaman has been there through all this time if you would have an opportunity this is the mic what would you say to the big guy uh, so my husband Matthew Quick yes he works at SeaWorld he's a diver and uh, he's my personal Aquaman. If you see a photo, you'll get it. He looks like Aquaman. He looks like typical Australian dude, a uh, surfer dude. Um, but I say uh, thank you to Matthew for giving me the space and the freedom to be me. Uh, he knew what he signed up for. Uh, <laughs> and so even in my marriage vows, I said to him, you know, uh, thank you for encouraging me. Thank you for supporting me. Thank you for I don't want to say allowing, just but just giving me that space. Like he knew he was marrying a traveler. <laughs> so I thank him for coming on the adventure with me and for trusting me um, to do that and for, you know, buying into that, buying into the dream, allowing me to dream and and to take our little boy on the adventure too. So, yeah, we've got big plans, big dreams. We want to see the world together and I you know, I loved doing it solo and I still do solo adventures, but to share it with my boys, um, just a whole new level. So I feel very grateful. Uh, and I also say thank you for putting up with me because it's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. I bet the boys are really uh, excited to have you as their, you know, a close member of their family there. So you know, congratulations to all that are involved. Now, Emma, you did show us that you've got one ace up your sleeve. You are going on to new ventures. You're starting something fresh. Um, you've changed lives. You've changed your own. And your journey is just a testament of the power of purpose and authenticity. What can people expect from Emma moving forward? more adventures uh, there's definitely there's a book coming 100% uh, there's definitely uh, I would love to have a documentary in the future I'm I'm really going to step into um, you know living the life that I want to my mission uh, is to live a life I love but my other mission is to visit every UN recognized country in the world I'm up to 56 there's 195 so I would really love to share that journey and, yeah, just to show what's possible and not in a just, you know, hopefully aspirational, inspirational, come along for the adventure kind of way. Uh, so that's, yeah, more of that, um, more more speaking, more in person. I really love getting out there uh, and meeting people. So being able to run things around the world would be incredible too so if you're you know in Australia awesome I'll come anywhere basically you just have to say come and I'll I'll be there if it, even if it's the opening of the envelope uh and then if you're around the world and you want to invite me to come and be with your audience that 
that it's just like the dream. So uh, I just really, really love connecting with people, people from all over the world, all walks of life. And the more I get to do that, the better. And yeah, uh, big stuff's coming. <laughs> There's never, I never do small stuff. I like that. I like that. And uh, well, thank you so much, Emma, for first of all, being on the show and just gracing us with your presence and sharing with us your new venture and uh, soft launching your brand on our podcast today, you know, and I, I just really um, enjoyed hearing your story um, and your experiences and how you have become who you have become. And I know there's more where I came from. I mean, you were just telling me that you've got relatives that are a hundred years old. So I don't think you have started <laughs> the genes in your family allow you to leave that long. So this is only the scrapping the surface. You've been up the Kilimanjaro. This is base and you yeah. have tracked to the base before you've even reached the base. Not a lot of people even get there. So congratulations on that. Thank you. Yes, my cousin is my grandma's cousin. He's uh, 100. Uh, he's my favourite person in the world. I can easily say that. I wish everybody could know him. But he, um, yeah, I have this ace tattoo for him. He was a magician. He learnt magic in World War II in Sydney when he was in hospital off a famous boxer because that's how he rolls. Uh, learned some magic tricks, loved it, got involved, and then he's performed magic for over 75 years. The day after, a couple of days after his 100th birthday, he performed magic at a magic theatre in Palm Springs. Um, and he performed magic for 50 years at the Indy 500. He was known as um, Magic 500. Uh, so he's got a lot of famous friends. He's very well respected. Um, but I think I learned a lot about that Um relationship building and connection from him uh people know him and tell me the most wonderful stories so he he's always got an ace up his sleeve so I wanted to have one up mine and uh I showed him my little magic trick which he loved and I think as an entrepreneur like you said we always need to have an ace up our sleeves so it's a good little reminder fantastic and I think that is a role model for a personal brand so mm. lucky you've got front row seats of seeing a personal brand unfolding. So you're way ahead of anybody else and their imposter syndrome, um, <laughs> you know, stuff coming up there. But I really, really am excited that we spend the time together. I mean, it's been a long time coming and your commitment to helping women find their voices and shine in their just own unique way is truly, truly inspiring so thank you so much thank you prosper and i love what you're doing here my friend ray told me how wonderful you were i could already see that online but uh thank you for giving others a voice and giving me the chance to share with your audience absolutely right and for our viewers you heard that i'm awesome stay tuned um obviously emma wouldn't lie would she and um, remember that your own personal brand is your compass to a vast world of opportunity. People will know, like, and trust you if they know what you stand for and who you are. And people do business with those they know, like, and trust. So this has been a blast, um, you know, talking to Emma. And um, I really, really can't wait to see what she has in store for us because, as she said, this is only just the beginning. Now, this has been Prosper and Emma on the online prosperity show and we're just signing off with gratitude uh for you having joined us on this empowering episode until next time keep prospering bye for now